What the fuck is this shit? In sincere enthusiasm, welcome weebs to the first, and perhaps only, Steins Gate Sunday stream live on Saturday. It is a Sunday in Japan, and therefore Steins Gate Sunday seems more appropriate. I am here with my contractually obligated stream of this game known as Steins Gate. I hope that you will enjoy this as much as I will. <sighs> Fucking hell. Alright, let me tell you a story, okay? Let me tell you a story. Okay, alright, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's let's get rid of the L-Core, alright? Let's get rid of the what kind of zoomers in chat don't know what the fucking Elcor is? Alright, 
Let me tell you. Let, let me tell you about the journey I just went on on here. Okay. Can I go back to here? All right. Cool. All right. Let's watch it again. All right. For no. Hold on. Hold on. Let me set up. I thought for some stupid reason. All right. I'm a dumb person. All right. I thought for some reason that this was going to be like an actual proper serious well-told story that just so happened to use anime as the medium okay that's that's what i thought that's what i thought it was okay i thought it was like oh this is this is one of the good animes this is one of the ones that doesn't have st stupid fucking horse shit and you know end up killing god at the end or some shit like that like i, I thought oh okay it's gonna be serious more mature it's not gonna be some some bullshit anime and then you know i got the game running earlier and then the the fucking intro started playing while i thought the music would stay on earlier so like that's a thing that happened is it gonna start again now or is it done forever i cannot believe the anime here we go all right let me turn it up i uh, It's like the Dangan Rampa 3 intro. Do 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 do. <laughs> bang your heads, weaves, bang your heads. Here we go. Oh man, what are the clocks mean? There's a maid. Of course there is. Uh, of course there is. How could there not be a maid? Damn. I wonder if she's important. Alright, there's some satellite thing. That's in the intro. Okay. This is very dangerous, Rampa. What's, what's the tweet where the guy is like, um, you know, the story of the guy who has only seen one movie and it was like, like some shitty, like, like cartoon movie. It was, it was like Toy Story or something or, or whatever is like the, the guy who's only seen, Boss Baby, that's it. The guy, the guy who's only seen Boss Baby watching his second movie, getting some big Boss Baby vibes from the. That's that's literally me with Dengen Rampa. <laughs> literally every anime getting some Dengen Rampa vibes. <laughs> Dengen Rampa is my boss, baby. <laughs> ah, all right, here we go. All right, so um uh. Uh, the weaves among you will be happy to know that I patched it because apparently I have to patch a, a visual novel. All right, this the the levels and layers of bizarre that we are on today. I have to patch a visual novel. All right, with a fan patch to fix the font, among other things. Apparently, so um, a lot of you have just breathed a weeby sigh of relief. That um, I I have patched it. All right, it's patched. I'm like like the color scheme of the satellite is literally reminding me of Monokuma, and I'm seeing faces in the solar panels, and that bizarre ball thing kind of looks like Monokuma's head on all white on the top. Like is like, getting some real Danganronpa vibes from this right now. Let me tell you. All right, so here we go. Yeah, it's patched. Um, we are not going to be having voice acting on, although I was tempted. Um, I think enough people listen to these and don't watch them that I'd like to cater to them, sorry. And I don't think we're gonna get much out of it. So um, I think we have to go through here and just like hit insert on all of them to turn the voice acting off, right? That's how we do it. 
There's a Kiru? Alright, here we go. I think that does it, right? Done? Okay. Do, 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 do. What else? Um, this is a weird menu. Voice volume. Ha! Uh, let's leave that on in case there's any, like, special voices that happen at some point. Troll? I'm not trolling. No, I, like, why would it, why would we leave the Japanese voice acting on? It's not acted. It's just, like, okay, hold on. Obviously, the voice lines are acted, but there's no, like, animations tied to it. Like, why would, why would, you're just gonna have to read along with me and be like, oh, okay, I hope that you're reading. All right, let's, let's do a poll then. Let's do a poll. All right, there is more resistance to this than I expected. All right, let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. We will vote. Do you want the, the voice acting on? Okay, so here, here are the conditions, all right? Please, I'm gonna wait like 30 seconds after I say the conditions. If voice acting stays on, the only things I am reading out loud are the lines that do not receive voice acting, okay? I will I will say them, and as soon as the voice acting is over, I'm hitting the button or have autoplay on and it'll go through. That is, that is it. I am not reading over the voice acting and I'm not reading over like, I'm not reading it again after the voice is done, all right? So so that's it. Like, that's all I'm going to do. So th those are the conditions. So if you want voice acting, like, if you want me to read it all out so you can, because you don't understand Japanese, you know, um, uh, which is presumably most of you, uh, you're going to have to read along the stream. Nice music. All right, there you go. Oh, wow, no's winning. Cool. Oh, yes is coming back up. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. God, I love the chaos in chat right now. God, the chaos. The chaos gate. Do, 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 Okay, yes has 420 something votes and no has 660 something votes. So um like I'm gonna wait like 10 more seconds and I'm gonna call it. We don't have to go to the end. Have the voice acting down at a whisper level. Oh, that's a good compromise. Yeah, let's do that. All right, we'll have the voice acting down very, very low. So we can still kind of hear it and I can talk, uh, I can read it out over it somewhat easier. And maybe you can still get kind of a hint of, uh, of, of the voice acting. That's a good compromise. I like that. All right, let's do that. Whoever said that, that's a good idea. All right, so this is the first and last time I'm ever streaming a visual novel, so um, please, uh, please uh, bear with me as I um, figure out how to do it. Uh, we might have to restart it and see. Um, uh, also, uh, I do want to say up front that um, uh, I'm, I'm hamming it up right now. I'm, I'm interested in, in, in uh, reading this and seeing what it's all about. Genuinely, uh, I've watched the intro. Um, and by watch the intro, I mean like the first 30 seconds that plays before the first voice line because I just need to make sure it worked um, And it was interesting to me. So like I am actually interested in it Like I've just been like shit posting and memeing a little bit because it is anime uh, But I had not seen the the animated musical intro before just now So uh, I am a little bit put off by that. Um, however, I do want to say like
take also seriously that if this is a boring time um, for you all more than me, like if I'm bored but you're all having fun, I'm okay with that. Like, like I, I'm getting paid to be here. <laughs> You know, so if, if I'm bored, as long as I'm not like tremendously bored, um, like I'll, I'll stick through it. Um, but if you're all bored and I'm bored, like if we're all bored together, uh, I will not continue. I will not force this over the next few weeks. Like I'll, I'll give it like a good solid like three, four streams. And if it's like after that, it's like, yeah, no one gives a shit about these anymore. Then we will stop. Okay, uh, I don't anticipate that happening. I, I just want to warn you uh, up front, like before anyone gets like super invested in this. Like that's what I'm thinking, you know. So, so that's it. Um, anyway, so what should it be? Um, can I turn this back on now, or is the, are these off? Like just turning it on? No. Okay, so I need to like. Okay, so like uh, let's go like that low and see. If that's too low, we'll turn it back up a little bit. Okay, that might be too low. Let's see. Uh, I could also just turn it up and then turn the voices um, down uh, in this one. But uh, I think if there's like a special, are there any special like cinematics? Because if there's special cinematics, I'd like them to be voiced actually. Make them different volumes for fun. <laughs> That's controlled by movie volume. Okay, so let's just like cap them all then. Oh God, it's like a Fallout 76 fake slider. God damn it. All right, we put them all at the top. So what we're doing in case you missed the compromise is that uh, we are keeping the voices on very, very, very low so we can kind of get the impression of what of the voice acting. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it aloud af like on top of that. And um, we'll see if that's, if it's too awkward, then we'll stop, okay? We'll just turn it off. All right, movie volume's there. Um, so I'll put it back next line. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's see. Okay, let's do a test and see how that goes. Hopefully, I can I can um, uh, tweak it. Do, do. Is there anything else that you guys want me to fix before we go into it? Disable sync. Message speed to max. Auto mode wait time. Um, I don't know, up here I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna start it and we'll see if we can figure uh, c configure some stuff uh, as it goes. All right, so here we go. We're starting S S Steen's Gate. Steen's Gate, here we are. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit because it should be hitting like 30 and it's not. Wow, this game's quiet. What the fuck? All right, um, how is that compared to me? Like, can you can you hear me clearly over the piano? Like, blah, 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 blah. Steen's Gate, Steen's Gate. Let me get down at Steen's Gate. All right, it's good. All right, so here we go. First, there was an explosion. But even coincidence is part of fate's design. I'm not losing it. I'm perfectly sane. What I speak now is the absolute truth. Not some childish fantasy. No matter how trivial something may seem, it has the potential to shape the future. Yeah, it's really loud now. Okay, hold on. Alright, let's do a test here with this one now too. Okay, here we go. So this one has some weird background noise. I hope that goes away. I didn't even hear, hey, what are you mumbling about? This is supposed to be voiced. Too loud?
Okay, I don't hear her at all, pretty much. Maybe I heard the Ocarina at the end. Hold on. Uh, can I go to the menu? Menu, 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 title menu, settings, config. All right. So I need to turn the voice up a little bit. Can I turn, like, the background noise down a bit? Because it's fucking annoying. Sound effects volume down? Is, is that what that is? Hold on. Let me turn it down all the way down to zero and see if it goes away. Yeah, so it's that. All right. Um, is that, like, just there the whole time? Because, like, because if not, we're, if it is, we're just stopping now. <laughs> All right, let's turn it up a little bit. All right, uh, voice like up here. Um, I want to hear her talk. Okay, that's pretty good, right? Like I heard that okay. I could talk over that just fine and you guys could still hear it. All right, so that setting is good for me. Now I just have to tweak um, how it is on OBS. Is it okay? That's fine. Am I too quiet? Okay, let me turn up a little bit on OBS then. That's a good setting for me. So I'll turn up a little bit and we'll see. All right, so now you're at, you're at minus 15. All right, let's restart and see if it's okay with, with the intro, okay? Sorry, we will have to tweak and I will remember these settings. I'll take a screenshot of the settings and then I'll know that for for um, for um the, the next time that we play this. All right, uh, title menu, let's go back to the start. Cold play it up. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm gonna start and let's see how it goes. すべては偶然だ。だがその偶然は荒くじめ決められていた世界を意識して語っているんであり、have you heard of the butterfly effect? If not, look it up. Boom. Then you'll understand how careful you must be. Unfortunately, I didn't understand. If only I had realized how dangerous my actions were, then I wouldn't have lost her. The future wouldn't have turned out like this. But, how could I have known? How could I have known that by pressing that button, I would decide the fate of all mankind? I don't remember this happening when I played it earlier. Just think about it. The average human perceives just 10 frames per second, 1% of his environment. We're not nearly as clever as we like to think. We go about our lives oblivious to a million different things that happen around us every day. Even when something catches our eye, our brain forgets it a moment later. I want to tell something. Don't do anything careless. Don't do anything rash. Don't pretend you didn't see that. Don't stream anime. Pay more attention. The hand of conspiracy was always closer than you thought. Just waiting for the right moment to strike. I must have hit a button and skipped to, to the... I remember seeing this. The universe has a beginning, but it has no end. Infinite. Stars, too, have a beginning, but are by their own power destroyed. Finite. History teaches that those who hold wisdom are often the most foolish. The fish in the sea know not the land. If they, too, hold wisdom, they too will be destroyed. It is more ridiculous for man to exceed slight speed than for fish to live ashore. That's a good line. This may also be called Steen's no, God's final warning to those who rebel. Oh man, can't can't wait to meet her. God's gonna be at the end of this game. <clears throat> gonna be big, big fucking boobed anime god girl. Higgs bo bosom chan. Alright, so that might be a little too loud actually. Her voice there.
Anyway, okay, so sounds okay? We're good? We're good? All right, so we're finally able to start, which means it's time to thank some people. We are gonna, we're not going to be repeating the intro. We're going to be starting from here. Uh, I'm going to say a quick thank you to uh, Vandalese or Vandalize for the 4-month 3-sub. Nihil the sa Sad Coder off for the 6-month 3-sub. Nomafit for the 10-month 3-sub. Glucose Knight for the 14-month 3-sub. Big Zach Leon for the 3-month 3-sub. Wife Divorce for 6 for the Tier 2 21-month 3-sub. Thank you so much. Uh, Frickin' Moron for the 32-month 3-sub. Automata for the 20-month 3-sub. Very fitting. Uh, Galuth for the 41-month 3-sub. Holy shit. Uh, Ironrath for gifting a Tier 3-sub to El... El Spy Kongru. I don't I don't know what that means. Hopefully I'm not supposed to know what that means. Thank you very much, Iron Wrath. Again, we do not we do not deserve tier three subs around here. Uh, thank thank you very much. Um, thank you, Hug, for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, XX My Lord, for the six month resub. Care Manag or Manage for the thirty seven uh, month resub. Oh, you wrote how to say it, but uh, I still said it that way. Caraman Egg. There you go. Caraman Egg. Let's see if I remember. Phoenix WM for the 6 month 3 sub. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zero Draken, as well, for the 6 month 3 sub. Uh, it's just Athena for the 29 month 3 sub. Uh, Jacko Bethwick for the new sub. Welcome, Jacko. Care Thane for the new sub as well. Welcome, welcome. And the last two on my list are Zorgox with 100 bits. Schleppel for the 26 month 3 sub. And Phoenix Trion for gifting a sub to the unofficial patch. You won. The Weebs one where the Vampire the Masquerade fans uh, didn't um, didn't succeed. Unofficial patch. We patched it unofficially. All right, here we go. Steen's Gate. We're starting. Hey, what are you mumbling about? There's no sound from the phone against my right ear. Only silence. I am baking in the summer sun. Sweat slowly slides down my chin and drips onto the asphalt. Wait, drips? Oh man. Ocarin, Earth to Ocarin. A girl is standing in front of me. She calls my name with an inquisitive tilt of her head. We are about to infiltrate deep into enemy territory, yet despite the imminent risk of death, there is no hint of tension on her innocent childlike features. I cover my phone's mouthpiece and turn to the girl with an index finger to my lips. You talking to someone? I nod and put my phone back to my ear. Still no sound from the other side. My contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Yeah. Alright, what bullshit's going on here? No, I was talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. Still no reply. Looks like they just want my report. It's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. Yeah, Dr. Nakabachi got the jump on us, but I'll make sure he tells us everything. What? The organization is already on the move. Why is it red? I open my eyes wide to match my shock tone. Damn. That's natural. The girl turns toward turns towards me in surprise. I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my temples. I see. So that's the choice of Steen's Gate. Else, oh, there we go. El Elsai Congru. Do 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 do. I speak the parting words, then pocket my cell phone. Steen's Gate. Some know it as fate. To others, it is the will of God. Steen's Gate. Fate. Steen's Fate. Fate Gate. <laughs> you could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. Really, though? In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance toward Radi Khan, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just drive through the front door like an average person. Are those gotchas? I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. Oh, we're a hitman! Nice. Then I put on my clown costume. Shame, but I only make it to the 7th floor before I have to stop and rest. Ooh, ooh, who was that on the phone? The girl, Sheena Mar Mariuri, immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here, and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. Who would have thought an 8-story building would be so tall? Can't be helped. I turn to Mayuri while my wiping the sweat off my brow. Is this is this his waifu? Because it's Mayuri. Whoa! If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh wow! Thanks, Okarin. Arigato. Mayuri smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. As always, she is quick to understand my position. 
Uh oh. We know. Yeah, here we go. We know each other since we were both little. I knew this was gonna be some bullshit exposition. Here we go. Mayuri is 16, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to to Steen's Gate, but now I've re I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. She should live a normal life. This is my present wish. This is my design. 7F. Far cry from 1F. We continue to the 8th floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and a sign reading Dr. Na Naka Naka Nakabachi? Bachai? Ba Nakabachi? Time, time, time Machine Press Conference. Okarin, Okarin. Mayuri insists on calling me Okarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. Bachi? How many times do I have to tell you, don't call me Okarin? Okay, Okarin. Huh? But I've always called you that. That was then. I've since become Hone. Hoin Kayuma. The insane mad scientist hunted by secret organizations the world over. Mwahahaha. Oh, for fuck's sake. But that's too hard to remember. Alright, so we're Rintaro. M Mayuri and Rintaro, okay. In any case, uh, new tip, what? In any case, Haroin Kayoma is my true name. Is it though? Kayoma. What's the red? Oh, okay, we'll never know. And besides, it doesn't even sound like uh, Okabi Rintaro. You're weird. Ehehehe. <laughs> Cease your foolish laughter. Uh oh. Okabi Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it for it is stupid. F really, you want me to quit? Why? I don't. I don't want to quit. We're just started. We have to get a fair chance. Wow! Holy shit, guys! What the fuck? The name that describes one's true essence, soul name. Oh my god, Shinny Bayou! What the fuck? Fucking, what's a fucking chinny by you? The organization is the organization. Nice. Enemies is weak against guns. You should get hit by guns. Nothing more. Nothing less. Its formal name is something else, but even uttering that name is a death wish because it's its true soul name. For that reason, all who know of its existence call it simply the organization. Alright. What the fuck is a chinny by you? Is that somewhere in New Orleans? And so, uh. <laughs> it's so I also hate the derivative Oak Ocarin. <laughs> Come on, it sounds like that Elf Boy's Blue Pipe thing. <laughs> so, Ocarin. Ah, oh, like an Ocarina at night. So, Ocarin. So, can I see something? In one year, year and out the other. She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. What are we doing here? I have no fucking clue. I like your hat, though. Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Yep. She nods without dropping her smile. We're here for Dr. Nakabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Radikan. It is here that the conference will be held. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patents under his belt, but mostly he is treated as a curiosity. Press conference, but where are the reporters? Mariuri's right. I've scanned the entire hall, but there's no one who looks like a reputable reporter or cameraman. Now, it was it was sent out like through the time machine, you know, uh, like the 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 this is happening in in the from the future. The press conference is held first, and then the advertisements go out. It's fucking, it's genius. It's fucking genius. There are only about ten of us standing in the hall, including me. Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented the time machine, I would have expected more. Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. Are we a dick? I thought the Nakabachi was... That, sorry, I thought that Nakabachi was like me. A scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I'd prefer not to get wrapped up in this in his mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. Alright, that's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon on my precious summer holiday. Mayuri ponders my, ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. Hey... 
Did you ponder my utterance enough? You rap something. Is it his birthday too? Ee hee 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 hee. It, no, it's a gun. I love a sigh. My ear is, is known to not only make bad jokes, but to laugh at them too. Oh man! She's always been special. Oh, What the fuck? That's not. Keep your guard up, my ear. I suspect this won't be a normal con for. Fucking called out by the game. I didn't even finish my sentence. Yeah, I know, because it cut off with a hyphen. Fucking anime. What? Got a new tip. Electromagnetic wave. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fire brains with electromagnetic waves? No, I'm sure it's just some bullshit. Waves that exhibit properties of both electricity and magnetism. First formally postulated by Maxwell in 1864. The electrical field and... Sorry, the electric field and magnetic fields oscillations cause them to mutually propagate each other, resulting in a wave that radiates through its surroundings. This is why it's called electromagnetic radiation. EM waves are divided by frequency into radio waves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Come on, little gamma rays. All right. No, it was just someone coming into the room. Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. Oh, no, it's not. We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above, but we're on, on the top floor. Fucking meteorites. All that's above is the roof. That's where Chili is. An earthquake. Is it magnitude 2? What does magnitude mean again? No time to deal with my Yuri's confusion. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs in my way. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the lock has been broken. I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. What the fuck is this? There's some kind of ph phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. An explosion? First there was an explosion. I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? But why an explosion? Terrace. Oh, if this was a video game, there'd be a choice here. Uh, no, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? What the? Excuse me? See, more faces here. A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall, and it looks kind of like a satellite. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Is this, did he land here? Like, impossible, even if that were the case, how the hell would he, he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff burst onto the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. Please stay back, everybody. And then, a woman, who I assume is a staff member, appears to wave us back. The press conference will proceed as scheduled. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. I've got a nose for conspiracies, and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they hiding? Was that an explosion? What was that explosion? Sorry, I want to know, but I shouldn't risk getting any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. Oh man, this is just like, oh man. Like, are we him the whole game? I hope not. Staff members lead us, lead all of us back uh, to the 8th floor. Just kidding, it's not a game. My Yuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the 7th floor. Several capsule toy machines are lined up next to a plate reading birthplace of the Japanese PC. A vending machine that dispenses small toys at random, one cannot tell what the toy is before opening the capsule. That's pretty fun. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. I breathe a sigh of relief, then take up my phone. It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening, and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. I won't do anything to jeopardize the mission. El Sai Kong grew. After I speak the words and hang up, I'm, I am able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fears the same thing. Sirens again? What the hell? I put away my phone and look back at my Yuri. She's standing. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level-headed or just air-headed. Oh man, what are you doing? Hmm? Well, I really want an Upa. Can't wait for you to just be like this secret genius that has understood everything. Just as I thought. Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The sign on the front says, Raynat Kekur 3D Character Doll Series. Is that... Oh, that's not... A t What's the red? I thought the red would be... Is that just another link to the to the vending machine? Like, hold on. Where's a new one? Organization. If I, if, okay, we're back at Chinibayu. If I go here, 
And I go hit F4 now. No, it doesn't come back. All right. Whatever. Oh, okay. Fictional. Otaku. Fictional. Uh, popular man. You know what? I don't care. <laughs> really? <laughs> right now. Kakeru is a popular enemy series with its own card game spin-off. Rainnet access battlers to even hold international tournaments. Upa is a series' mascot character. It resembles an um, elept elliptical egg with limbs sticking out like some kind of deformed dog. It's what they call an ugly cute character. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year, an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me, though. This reminds me of Terror's theme for yeah, Final Fantasy VI for some reason. Then go for it. I can't guarantee you'll get an Upa though. She will. Mayuri gives me a troubled smile. But Mayushi is all out of 100 yen coins. Mayushi is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. I hate you. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. Mayushi star. But who really cares? You know what? You know what, Rintaro? You're okay. So, can I borrow 100 yen, please? She holds her hand hands out with a, with a look like a begging puppy. Looks like she was planning this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say gimme. Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll show you just how harsh life really is. I pull a 100 yen coin, set in the machine slot, and spin the lever. Ah. Ah. I open the capsule and take out the contents. My ear leans forward eagerly to see what I got. It's an upa, and it's metal. A metal upa. Is it rare? It's oh, it's like a duloc. Super rare. While I examine the metal upa, a boy who is watching us tries his luck on the same Rynet machine. He also gets a metal upa. Ah, oh, a normal upa. He looks at my- are they all Upa? He looks at my metal Upa in resentment. Oh man, trade. I turn to see my Yuri's sparkling eyes also fix on the Upa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. <laughs> I give this creature metal to you, my Yuri. What- what are we doing right now, chat? Honestly, I don't want it. Really? Are you sure, Ocarin? The name is Honen Kayoma. Hehehe, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Okarin. <clears throat> is she doing it on purpose? Hope so. Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine press conference. I hear the announcement from the floor above. Sounds like they're starting. Okay, so that has to come back, right? There's no way that would just be a complete waste of time. I head to the stairs. It's like if it's about time travel, do we do we like interact with that machine again in a different timeline and we get a different Upa or something? But Mayuri doesn't follow. Let's go, Mayuri. No. Mm, give me just a sec, I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with the metal Upa. I go on ahead. Oh, and then she died. Seriously, the sirens. Sorry, I thought the wind having the window open would be better than having a fan. But maybe not. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabachi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Dr. Nakabachi enters the, sp the sparse applause. Enters the sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown for some reason. I can feel his irritation from here. Some of the I saw in this in the screenshot. Some of the, like like the the clothes and the hair in this game kind of kind of look like space. It's kind of interesting, but also a bit weird. Uh, I am Dr. Nakabachi. Thank you all for. I hope I'm saying that close to correct. By the way, I'm not saying that wrong on purpose. Uh, Nakabachi takes the microphone and begins to speak. His voice bringing with confidence. The drip. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. Did he really build a time machine? Mayuri appears after writing her name on the metal upa. She's a bit late in more ways than one. What did... Excuse me? What did she think a time machine presentation would be about? The movie? I take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. 
I mean, it'd be pretty easy to prove, wouldn't it? I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't. As he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. Doctor! Oh, oh, are we the, are we the baddies? My war silence is Nakabachi and draws the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud, that's who. You stole your theory from John, John Teeter and you call yourself an inventor. John, is John Teeter, wait, hold on. I know about something like this. Someone did some f internet forum thing, but was that was that like a reference to something else too? Or is that a several thing time travel from 2036 who appeared on an American, oh, it is a, okay, on an internet, American, American internet message board on November 2000. Um, the internet went into an uproar, flooding the board with questions and debate. Yeah, he had, to, he had to come back in time because he needed some old computer part or some shit. Um, wasn't John Teeter like uh, like a reference to something else though, or, or something like that? There was some part of the name was, was a reference to something. Um, how, how fucking impressed are some of you that I actually know about that? Holy shit. Teeter, <laughs> Teeter posted pictures of his time machine and its control manual as well as diagrams illustrating time machine mechanics. Complete horseshit. Complete horseshit. He also disclosed information on near future events, time travel, physics, history, and intervention, and multiverse timelines and world lines. And then four months after his appearance, he left a comment saying, I will be leaving this world line shortly and this will be my final post and disappeared. Yeah. Complete horseshit. But fun horseshit. Very, very fun. I like, I like that kind of shit. Um, so, someone throw this man out. You're the one who should we should throw out, Doctor. Have you no shame? You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Little pest? Dead weight just then someone grabs my arm from behind. Quite convinced it's an official uh, here to throw me out. I turn around to glare him down. And it's a hot girl. Unhand me, you. Huh? It's a girl about my age. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? In your dreams. Ah. Uh, we haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makis Kirusu. Makis? Makisi? It's not Makisi. Can we just call her Maki, though? Ma Maki, Maki Kiri? Makis Kirusu? Makize, Makize, really? I have to say Makize. I'm not gonna remember that. Like Makize is gonna become Kuze. Like, in the next time I see it, like I'm just gonna call her Kuze. If you want me to call her Makuze, it's already Makuze. It's it's like the, I I didn't even do that on purpose. It's already Makuze. Makize, Makize. <laughs> Maki. Let's call her Maki. Maki. Maki Kurusu. Makuze Kuze. Uh, a few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akihabara. The article was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Somewhat? 17-year-old... What do you mean somewhat? 17 year old uh, Kurusu equals Makize announced surprising thesis in her in the far eastern island nation. This thesis, even if it is impossible, each man's making to data is what? Okay, fuck that. Girl genius, uh, Maki Kurusu. Uh, I recognize the stubborn looking girl from her photograph. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. Is that a scowl? That's a scowl. That's not the. What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look, quick look around the room, then turns back with a stern expression. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with the attitude? She's obviously not staff, and there's no way that that the is that meant to be a different color? Because it kind of looks like Mac Maki would be working with someone like Doctor Nakabachi, which means no. You're with the organization, huh? The what? <laughs> if their tendrils have gotten this far, then I've made a grave mistake. The eyes are a bit strange in this, um... This art style. Stop fooling around and come with me. Yeah? 
My outburst has already attracted too much attention. Nakabachi, in particular, looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. <laughs> anyway, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. If the organization gets wind of my presence here, it could endanger Mayuri, to say nothing of these ignorant civilians and the metal upa. I left Maki Kur I let Maki lead me out of the assembly hall. Are they gonna say full names the whole time? Because like, damn. Let's bump it up the word count. Skipping over that, we're going to be done two hours early. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will, you, what will your superior say then? What are you talking about? She glares at me quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there's no innocence in her eyes. A beautiful agent unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats in exhilaration from the danger. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. <laughs> I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. Do you? What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Maki Kurusu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to- Are you just talking to yourself, my dude? Whoa, what the fu- Kurusu suddenly snatches the, the phone from my hand. Kurisu, maybe? Kurisu? What skill? I didn't have time to react. What What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. Who were you talking to? Who are we? Can you kill him and then we'll just be you for the rest of the... Like, what? what is... Are we just... RPing as someone who's important? Like, what? Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She's good. Is she trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break? Recover that this isn't enough to sway me. Your techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. There's no. That's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. <laughs> it's like a fucking gun in Metal Gear Solid 4. Which we're playing, by the way, it won the vote. Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that could get me killed. I quickly retrieved my phone and wiped the cold sweat off my forehead. Phew, that was close. So, you talk to yourself. Nice. Best girl. Gah, this is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Maki Kurusu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. <laughs> I could just find an opening. <laughs> Suddenly, Kurusu steps... <laughs> on sorry steps up to me with a serious expression she stares right at me her huge eyes blazing with strength of will such fire i can't look away could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent what were you trying to tell me earlier earlier what are you talking about about 50 minutes ago before the conference started nonsense this is the first time we've met oh okay I was in the Yuri and that Upa toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. Alright, so future assholes was talking to her, but would this girl do something that underhanded? You look like you were going to start crying any second. Alright, the future's looking bright. Why? Have we met before? She seems sincere. This makes her, that makes her even more suspicious. Pretty sus, that's right. Don't let her beauty fool you. Okay, we get it, she's beautiful. All right, it's a visual novel. We can decide that for ourselves. She's a cold calculating secret agent. If I show the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. I'm a mad scientist after all. Genius girl, our next meeting shall be his enemy. <laughs> Making fun of Mayuri for wanting a fucking toy when we're like, what the fuck are. Uh, farewell. <laughs> we're fucking Gundam. Like, what the fuck? I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop like I'd listen to the enemy. Like. Damn, the organization. Is there even an organization? They must be serious if they're sending in agents like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me once I'm convinced Maki, uh, Maki's not tailing me. I sigh, rubbing my temples. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? 
My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in, go in going back. I require sustenance. I must go to a place and acquire the, the food known as noodles. I guess I'll just go home. All right, what about my Yuri? You're just going to leave it. Wait, am I forgetting something important? Let's see now. What What is it? Damn, I left my Yuri behind. I knew she'd be a liability. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but I got careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I can just have her meet me here. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone. I turn it on. Receiving. And it rings just as I do. Hmm? Huh? An email? It's not just a regular email. There's a video attached. And it's from an unknown address. I open the video file with some trepidation. Hmm? Okay, so what's that part in... Um, uh, that actually might be a spoiler for that movie, actually. There's a, there's a movie involving time travel and and, uh, and a part happens with... Um, there's, there's two versions of the same person in the same sort of area at the same time. And... Uh, they're supposed to not have their phones and, uh, like they're supposed to turn their phones off when they go back in time and they, they accidentally took their, one of them took their phone out and that made, that made a change happen. It was the first kind of change that they happened. Um, and they didn't know They were like, well, what would happen? Like they didn't answer it. It's like, okay, I remember having that phone call when we were here before. What happens when, uh, like, if there are two phones, like, does it, does it go to the closest one? Does it go to both of them? Like, if there's two versions of the same phone with the same SIM card, like, what happens? And I, and I don't remember if that was that was in uh, uh, um, resolved or not, but it was a very kind of, like, one of the most sh subtle, like, oh, shit moments um, in the movie. It's a, very, it's a very, very good movie. That's not a big spoiler. People have said the name of it in chat. Like, that's not a pretty big spoiler, but, like, I, I don't want to say the name of the movie just in case. Um, there's nothing but noise. Is this a prank or some sort of uh, Mackie style attack? Maybe the noise is some sort of make, make people go crazy frequency. Good thing I'm already crazy. Damn, wish I could hear it. No, wait, I don't remember giving her my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. Yeah, but it could be a uh, like an agent. You know, the agency has an uh, organization, has uh, access to everyone's emails, and we're pressing matters to deal with anyway. Okay, this was fucking weird. All right. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Imagine being in control of this. Like, wow. I stopped the video and called my Yuri's phone from my address book. Damn Yuri, why won't you pick up? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. Aw, oh, man. Fucking my Yuri got norded, but things will get messy if I bump heads with M with Mackie again. Wait, don't tell me. Did that femme fatale kidnap my Yuri? Damn you, that's my Mayuri, and is that how the organization operates? Leaving <laughs> without Mayuri isn't an option. <laughs> Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me, and there's a very real danger that she might have, might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Hanoen Kayoma. Is that like your James Bond persona? Like, what the fuck are I have to go back for her? She just goes along with this shit? I the thought of climbing back up to the 8th floor is depressing, but I have no choice. Yeah, we're on floor 4! What? That's nothing! <laughs> oh, damn, what a hardship. Alright, when I get back, this guy still has not taken a seat. When I get back to the assembly hall, Dr. Nakabachi's conference has just finished. Nobody is on stage, and the phony inventor has already left. The 20 or so members of the audience are starting to pack- I, I can't believe this is still going in the same fucking conference room. What the fuck is this? I thought we were going to be trying to break in, in into like like a mansion and there's a gate in the way. It's the Steen's mansion. The Steen's family has a mansion. There's a time machine in the basement and we can't get past the gate. Oh no, where's the gate? We can't break through it. Oh no, can we, we try climbing it? Nope, that's chapter one done. Climbing didn't work. Okay, let's go around it. Nope, didn't work. All right, let's try and get the gate. Like, what the fuck is the, what? Why are we still here? I assume find my Yuri. She's in the corner looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. That's true. Even better, I don't see Ma uh, Maki anywhere. <laughs> yeah, looks like I scared her off. <laughs> <laughs> so be it, I'll let her go this time. Is it common for anime to make the, the protagonist this type of character? Because this is fucking weird. Still keep my eyes peeled as I run up to my Yuri. <laughs> my Yuri. 
Why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. Okay, my metal upa ran away. She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Ran away? What, it's alive? That's a little hard to believe. I think I dropped it. So it rolled away. I see, so she was looking for it. Not like it really matters. Forget about it, you can always get another one. No, they're super rare! No way, metal upas sell upwards of 10,000 yen online, you know? Wait, what? That toy was worth that much? Think, Mayuri. Where did you drop it? I don't know, that's why I'm looking, and even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? Whoa, that 10,000 yen will fund my research! So it was 100 yen for a try, and I'm guessing that's that's like the equivalent of a dollar, like it's a dollar a try. So this is a hundred dollars? I said you can't sell it, it even has Mayushi's name on it. Thus begins our search for the metal upa. Aw, oh, she's adorable. Upa, upa, come out, come out wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tuturu is Mayuri's catchphrase. It means, actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Wow, we're a monster. Anyway, the metal upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule toy machines. Another possibility is that someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. Just imagining the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe in envy. I want to do a smug grin. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but the lust for money? As we want to sell it. Sounds like you, Okarin. Well, wasn't expecting that from Mayuri. Why are you over there? Uh, Alright, it's the metal upa. Uh, what was that? Was that a scream? I think so. Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including Mayuri and me, less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. Even I cannot suppress a shiver. Ooh. First the explosion on the roof, now this. What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Mayuri, here. Stay here, Mayuri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. Every day's great at... Yeah, this seems like it's good. How are we still not leaving? Is this, is this just the whole game? Are we just in this building for the whole... Th the Echoes... I'm sorry, not a game. The Echoes leave me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. I crouch down and turn the corner slowly, keep my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. Who is it? It's Mackie. The clothes are familiar. It can't be. Is it Mackie and she's dead and that's the thing that we see? Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, that's the thing we saw in the intro. All right, so we were the person talking. Makes sense. And yeah, I saw a flash of red hair in the intro. Wow. Ma Mackie Kurusu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The impertinent genius girl I just fought with 10 minutes ago is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. Sure it's not her hair? She's dead. No, but why? It was the fucking metal upa. Suddenly I realized that I'm shaking. I want to run, run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Maki Kurusu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? Leon. There's no one else here. He can be the only one with red hair. Ooh, uh... Wait, was it pink? I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. Call the police. A man cries out in panic. At, th at this, everyone starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Concern for Mackie is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, Mayuri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. What happened, Okarin? Is music too loud or is it okay? We're leaving. I grab Mayuri's hand and run. I race down the stairs trying to drive the image of Kurusu's uh, dead body from my mind. And real quick, uh, so I don't get behind, thank you Vex002 for the new sub. Welcome Vex. Sorry that it took me so long to say thank you. We're, we're into the reading right now. Thank you Legion7820 for the 20 month resub. Thank you King of Dunces for the 21 month resub. Uh, Cream Tangerine for the 100 bits. 
Uh, Sunday for the four month resub. Vulp 13 for the four month resub as well. Last Isis for the three month resub. Histories Plushiest, that's an interesting name for the three month resub, thank you very much. And uh, Grash Ock, or Grash OK for the uh, seven month resub, thank you very much. Tier two as well, damn, thank you, thank you Grash Ock. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Are you still trying to draw the image of Kurusu's dead body from the moment? Okay, so so far, um, like we're how long are we into it now? We've been live for over an hour, but with the like the intro shit and everything, I think we've only been into this for like maybe half an hour. Uh, so far, I'm a little intrigued. Uh, I'm not hating it. Uh, I'm cracking some jokes just to be funny, but um, well, trying to be funny. Uh, like I'm not hating it. I'm interested. I want to see where it goes. Um, the art is okay. Like it's it's. I, I'm not like oh my god, this is beautiful. But the art the art is okay. Like it's it's fine. Like it's doing the job. Like it's a bit strange, and I kind of like that it's a bit strange. Uh, the main character is really weird, and um and I'm like interested in seeing where it goes. I like I like time travel stories, so I'm assuming there's time travel. Uh, maybe there's not. Maybe it's fake out. Uh, but the best part about it so far is the music. The music's pretty good. I like the music. But I can't. Big Danger Rampa vibes. Yep. Yeah. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind more than the sight of the body itself. This was my first time seeing a dead body. Is this what it's like? First time so far. When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. But that was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. Yet. Getting some uh, some pretty big boss baby vibes right now. Uh, Dory, word, used here as a suffix, meaning street. Is this part of the unofficial patch? Because this, this is the fucking unofficial bullshit all over it. Okay. Street. Where's that pro, pro ZD skit? <laughs> There's no English word equivalent for this, so we left it in. So read this long fucking paragraph explaining what it that it sort of means friend instead. I finally stop once we get out to the main street. Uh, Chio, Chio Dori. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Hey, what happened? Do you look really pale? Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks she looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone died. Can I use a gamepad? Cause like I find it holding a gamepad a bit more comfortable than having my hand on the mouse. Can I do that? Eh? I just got an achievement. Alright. Is the cursor still on the screen for you all, or no? Yeah, it is. Okay, hold on. Alright, is it gone now? Eh? Alright, is this a puzzle? Isn't A per to progress? Like what? B open. Oh, I can actually select shit. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I th I didn't know there was there was choices in this. My bad. Sorry. All right. Eh? Okay. What what are we trying to do? Change settings. Call ringtone. Mail ringtone. Wallpaper. Wow. Look. Th damn. The technology. All right. Let's go. Red blood. After. Let's. That's, that's legit. Yeah. We just saw someone die. Here we go. Red blood. All right. Can I can I just talk to her instead? I want to close it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I take several deep breaths. I didn't realize there was a phone button. Sorry. I the color of that blood. I've come. No, I don't want auto. No, stop it. Okay. Uh, Maki Kirisu is dead. Uh, and I don't know who the killer is. Bing, bing, bing. Bon Signs in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive and this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is go Okay. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, Moe, and porn. <sighs> mo anime, mo problems. All right, how do I how do I uh, get to to the index, the dictionary uh, with the gamepad? Is it Y? No. 
Is it is it X is auto? Is it left bumper? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, go back to Y. Oh my God! Okay, holy sh holy shit! All right. Um, that was really bad. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. Um, I'm not sure what I plan to do with it, but I know my friend Dario. Tell him what happened. What happened just now? Since he knows about M Maki Kurusu, uh, I suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim. But my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. Or maybe it's start. No, select. It's select. All right, here we go. This. Here we go. Uh, a word used to describe character traits that are cute or endearing includes flaws such as glasses. Whoa, clumsiness or ditziness. Whoa, how is ditziness a flaw? Also used to refer to cult the culture of entertainment centered around characters who possess such traits. Pronounced mo. All right. We're not special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty slime-like flesh. That's a line. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. <laughs> what the fuck? That's how we humans are. Is this is this the real Rintaro now? While well, wallowing in a bit of angst, I be that was a bit of angst. That okay, we killed her. Like what the fuck? I begin to type on my phone. I'm a huge Ed Lord, short and stout. Fucking Sephiroth is my handle. This is my pout. Someone stabbed Maki Kurusu. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. Don't know who. Someone stabbed Mackie. Don't know who. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. I don't know if she was stabbed. That just seems like the most logical explanation given the amount of blood and the absence of a gunshot. We didn't see that either. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like writing it down. I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. It might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. <laughs> Why should I feel guilty? Actually, I, I did. What you didn't know is that when we heard that scream, I went into the hallway, is that I went down and I pulled out my fucking shot ball and I threw it at the back of her head and crushed her against the floor. And then I ran back out and I didn't tell you that. And then I opened the door and went, Oh my God, oh no, oh no, Mackie's fucking dead. Oh no. I just saw someone de someone's death up close and only a few minutes later I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, you changed your fucking wallpaper to blood. I, well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so that suits me. I finished typing and placed my thumb over the send button. And then, I pressed down. Sending. This is dramatic. Failed. Uh-oh. Eskel, is this normal? What? What was that? Wait, look around. They're gone. Summer break. Noon. The busiest street in town. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanished into thin air. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. Maybe you just did like a... You shot in the air, and then you did a 360 spin. I stand petrified, speechless, and alone on the empty street. Desperate to find someone, anyone, I look up. Uh-oh. At the top, and there, at the top of Radikan. Sticking out from the 8th floor event hall where we just were. Is a crashed satellite. Crashed. Sorry. I have, I have problems uh, pronouncing D's and T's. Five P- Okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, we get to see it again! Oh, okay. Do, 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 It has its own power. It ruins. What? Back in the town. Oh, Kabi Rintaro. Ashida Itaru. Makizi Kurusu. Shina Mayuri. Amani Shizua. Do, 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 Forest Nyanya. Oh, fuck off. Yurish. Oh, what? The, that's too fast. Kiryu Moka. Kiryu's a girl? 
Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Open the eyes. Some slime? Slime-like flesh or whatever? What the fuck was the slime? Oh, no. This is a long story, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Steen's gay. All right. Time Travel Paranoia, Chapter 1. Got an achievement. Hey you, can you see us? Alright. Are we a cam boy now? Not sure. Do do do. Thank you, The Rival Rose, for gifting a sub to Creepy Culture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swamps, for the 9 month resub. Bongo Cat Feynman. <laughs> For the 13 went three sub. <laughs> kind of topical, too. Uh, thank you, uh, Grino655, uh, for the uh, new sub. Thank you, Grino. Thank you, SCP Zuck, for the new sub as well. Welcome, SCP Zuck. The Good Pierce, for the new sub also. Three new subs in a row. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Dantero Setti, for the... or Dan, da, Sorry, Dan, Dante Rossetti? Probably that. All right. Uh, there's no capital letters. Sorry. So I, I, it's hard for me to tell for the uh, four month three sub. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott713 for the two month three sub. And thank you, uh, Piscia or Piscia uh, Tapetti, tap, tap, tap I think. Hopefully close for the new sub. Welcome. Thank you very much, Tapetti. All right. Let me click back over here. And if I hit A, uh, there we go. Hey, you can see us. Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you on the other side of the monitor. All right, are we breaking the fourth wall? So if I press if I press B, the phone comes up. Oh, right now it it um it hides the text box in case we want to see something that's behind it. Okay. <laughs> Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. I suppose that from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. God, I hope he's talking to his goldfish. For, for it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you too. True reality is on this side of the screen. Wow, this is deep. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter, I shall speak in simpler terms, easy enough for even you to understand. This is the Future Gadget Liber Laboratory, located in the Akihabara distri Habara district of Tokyo. We call it simply the lab. Our purpose is to shelter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Still still not sure if he's just making this shit up. All right, we're back in the Chini Bayou. Uh, the system is the means by which the organization... Okay, maintains its grip on humanity. Its full scope is too vast to comprehend, but suffice it to say that the system gives the organization influence over government, religion, media, culture, and science worldwide. Most people do not even know that their lives are controlled by... By the system it is so deeply embedded in the fabric of society that modern civilization would not be able to function without it destroying the system therefore would plunge the world into chaos oh so the system's money okay cool really you shouldn't do bad things Okarin. quiet i'm a mad scientist remember from the station, head down Shuodori until you reach Suhirocho Station. Then take a left onto Kura Maibashi Dori. In the alley before the traffic light, you'll find the rundown Ohi Ohiyama building. The lab is on the second floor. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called the Bon Bron Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. It deals exclusively in CRT monitors of all things. Ah oh, man, nostalgia. Can you imagine even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the demand for CRT? is practically non-existent but the proprietor of the brawn tube workshop tenoji is also the owner of the building 
That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby shop even as land value continues to rise. He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. I digress. The future gadget laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are... Okarin, Okarin, you've got to say lab mems, not researchers. Lab mems? Our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab, lab mem number 001, the insane man scientist Honin Kayoma. Okarin is cuter, though. Cosplay. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, Lab Man number 002, Shinanime. She's our cosplayer, too? Of course she is. An abbreviation of costume play to dress up in costume, most often as a fictional character. People who cosplay are called cosplayers, who can, which can be shortened to layers. What? Many cosplay... Many cosplayers make their own costumes, but she can't cosplay as someone who's real, because then she would get fucking cospox. Kami Mayushi. I like making costumes more than wearing them. So she's a cosplayer, you know, enabler. A tremendously skilled hacker. Really? This needs an entry, or at least someone who claims to be one. Uh, the threat, my friend's a hacker, so he can easily find out who you are, often appears during arguments on the internet. People mockingly call the obviously non-existent hacker a hacker. Alright. So, um... Is this gonna get like meta with these fucking tips at some point? Cause like, like seriously, that's really superfluous. Like what the fuck? Unless we have our resident super, super hacker, uh, labman number 003, Hashida Itaru. Super hacker. Stop calling me that. It's super hacker, duh. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. This is why we're just bullshitting. For details, see our lab's homepage. Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it spawned. Is this... Okay, 720. I can't remember what day it was before. Is this before what just happened, or... Nupon? Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to 8, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Like, in that tennis manga, right? I get it. I don't. Where's the fucking entry for that one? Oh, thank you. Uh, no, it's the number of earthly desires in mortals, you at channel junkie. Fictional, Japan's most popular message board, covers a wide variety of topics from hacking to cooking to anime to current events. Oh, okay, it's Reddit. Okay. And I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. Yeah, I wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see I'm talking to the person behind the monitor? Ah, uh, he just grinned. What are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. Just say, don't look at me. On the internet, it is an unwritten rule to say this whenever you see an image of someone or something looking towards the camera. No. I don't think that's going to work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the game. I doubt it's even occurred to them. Uh, but aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? <sighs> A female character in an anime game or manga. <sighs> That's different. Those girls are my wife. <laughs> Nobody cares about your harem. But Mayushi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in a game? Any way we can know for sure? Nah, you're not. This isn't a game. No. Come on. Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. Nice chinny bayou, bro. Literally 8th grade sin sin Wait. Oh! Oh, 
Oh, so anything that has under this is just made up bullshit in his head. All right. Okay. Literally eighth grade syndrome, the ter a term referring to a mindset exhibited primarily by teenage males also used as a derogatory term to refer to older people who still exhibit this mindset. Characterized by an affected attitude of nihilism or cynicism, extreme self-centeredness, delusions of power or superiority, and a consuming fear of being treated as a child. The person exhibiting these symptoms believes that they are cool, but most observers find them pathetic. Chinny Bayou, which is often abbreviated Chinny, uh, also refers to the fictional tropes that teenage males often enjoy, such as an ancient conspiracy suit. Oh, he really is Gundam! Superpowers, especially power sealed in the character's eye or arm. Norse mythology battles for the for the fate of the multiverse, etc. The consummate Shinibayu case will work such elements into his own personal backstory. Ocarin is a textbook example. Damn, alright. And why why are they friends with the Shinibayu? I step back from the monitor. The fuck is that? Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character Alpaca Man. A mammal. This is not Shinibayu. A mammal related to the to the camel. Average weight 50 to 55 kilograms. Average length around two meters. Habitat Peru, B Bolivia, Chile. Oh, nice. Recent alpacas can even be found in America and New Zealand. Unlike camels, alpacas do not have humps. Their bodies are covered with fluffy fur. Due to their strangely long necks and charming faces, they have some popularity as an ugly yet cute, ugly cute animal. Do, 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 do. This is a game called Alpacaman 2, where you speak to Alpacaman via microphone and watch him react. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally I find only the ugly part of Ugly Cute to be true. I bought it yesterday, 500 yen used, headset included. Nice. I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. Is this one of your wives? Shut it, Haka. I'm no chinny by you, patient. Alright, the music is a bit loud, isn't it? Should I turn it down a little bit? I feel like the music's a bit loud. I sweat, sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. Uh, can I save it? When did we save it last? Oh god, good thing we saved it. Holy shit, what if I actually went to the title menu? Do 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 There we go. Oh, what the fu- I spill my drink. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. Oh. I'm Honen, Kayoma. That's your character's name, right? It's too quiet now? Oh, sorry, it's, it's really good for me. Sounds gonna be a little different for you guys. Alright, there you go. I turned up a tiny little bit. That's your character's name, right? Oh, Dari, your communication skills are beyond repair. I love you know that I go to a ton of offline meets and I'm always the life of the party. When members of an internet community meet in real life. Thanks for that. This fat, bespeckled guy is my brother in arms and right hand man, Hishida Itaru, nickname Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer playing games and watching anime. A term for people with an obsessive interest in a particular topic, hobbyists, most often refers to fans of anime, manga, and video games, but there are also train otaku, military otaku, electronics otaku, etc. Grilled shrimp, boiled shrimp. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with, he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything's fine as long as it's Mo. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Oh, the needle bit my finger. Did we kidnap her? Over here, nursing her pricked finger, we have Sheena Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's also an otaku, nowhere near Daru's level, though. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working on costumes at her usual leisurely pace. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. <laughs> the truth is, Mayuri is completely useless. Wait, 
Useless, still there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the Future Gadget Laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, I'm Mayuri. I'm now a part of the team. Are we gonna see the scene later and she's gonna be like fucking like tied up and and like completely fucking like Crazed and she's gonna be like I'm your hostage or something like is our per perception of reality fucking warped to shit through through this guy too Like what the fuck is going on here? Mayushi is Ukraine's hostage. I belong here getting some pretty big dang and rampa vibes. Well, that certainly was cryptic But her offer was my salvation for she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from my solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. My area doesn't have to be useful. Wait, her being here is enough. I really need to pee. Alright, half an hour? I think we can wait half an hour. So did Alpaca Man say anything? Yeah. Nope, nothing. The human face Alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive you think the game was bugged. Alright, is that who you were talking to? Or is this a, a different screen you were talking to? Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Damn antisocial Alpaca. I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do... The TV makes it sound like it's shorted and then the screen goes black. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is on lease from the Braun Tube Workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry. Damn, I'll have to get it repaired later. Turu is pretty good at, um, at hardware though. Maybe he can fix it. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at a, cons a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. How are you? How are you funding this, my dude? I close my eyes, and what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. Or is it like? Is it like friends that we're not supposed to question how he? Wait, it an hour ago the satellite fell on the building. It's been an hour. You came back and played El Pokemon. What? What do you mean? Someone? She just died. Fucking and you went home and played all Pokemon. What do you mean? What is wrong with you? They're gone. As I left Radikan, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. All right, time to fucking relax and unwind with a fucking rollicking game of all Pokemon. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores gone. In the restaurants gone. Even the cars vanished. Drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores But those catchy melodies were the only sounds of, of life remaining heat was rising from the asphalt in waves But I only felt a cold chill down my spine and a cold sweat. I just stood there breathless until What's wrong? Mario's voice brought me back to reality Mayuri hadn't disappeared. She was right there looking at me with questioning eyes Everyone disappeared just now, right? Huh? You saw it too, right? Just now, before our very eyes. Panic took hold as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mayuri? You saw it, right? Mm hmm? Huh? Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. I didn't see anything. Or is everyone back then? Or... You didn't? Or it's just like she doesn't realize everyone's gone because she's an airhead and you went back and he's like I should probably tell my hacker friend that you know everyone's gone but first of first the fucking <laughs> the latest episode of Alpaca Man you didn't? I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. Let's race. You saw nothing? Nothing at all? There were people here a second ago weren't there? Were, there were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. 
It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know, you're seeing things, aren't you? I'm sure it's because of the heat. Tuturu. Du -du -du. How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Ak Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radikan, where I had been just a moment before. The biggest, most awful satellite. There it was, an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building, where not five minutes before I had found Maki Kurusu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Maki might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was, I wonder if the Alpakamon game is working. What the hell is that satellite doing there? Yeah, that too. Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like satellite -like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop, under the table, but that's not what I was seeing now. This satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did that happen? Mayuri, about that satellite. <gasps> yep, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean, what was a surprise? It made a huge kaplow sound. A huge kaplow? It certainly did make a sound, but I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like zim. Did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? Yes. Had I lost my mind? What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real, had I dreamt it all. Hey, you two. Just then, a, a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This area is off limits, you have to leave. We're sorry. Ooh. So we're in the future right now? First, my good man, let's call you Officer A. I have one question. Officer A? Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? What are you talking about? Get out of here. I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Maki Kurusu and get him to call an ambulance. Sorry, get him to call an ambulance, but before I could... Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by the upper arm and said, Get the fuck out of here. No one got stabbed at Radikan. What? How could he say that with such certainty? Yeah, that's what that's weird. While I was still trying to comprehend like even if that's the truth, it, what? Situation policeman forcefully let us away. We were escorted up to UPX and released. Fictional, a major office building in Akihabara, and then I went back and played fucking Alpakamon. There were people at UPX like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as Officer A had said, Chuodori, Chewbacca, had been blockaded by police, so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakiba N Nakabaki's presentation really happen? I check online for any news. And I was buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into Radikan. Uh, all of the major stations in Tokyo, even to to TV, are running special bulletins about it. Fictional television network based on Tokyo. To TV airs more anime than other commercial television networks, making it a favorite among otaku. When a major news story breaks in Tokyo, most stations interrupt regular programming to deliver a special bulletin. But not this one. To TV is the exception, which has given rise to the joke, if To TV cuts to a special bulletin, the apocalypse is nigh. Oh, shit. Well, shit, the apocalypse is nigh. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but Cho Dori is still closed off. Akihabara Station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance, uh, disappearance of thousands of people from Akibara, Akiba Streets, nor about Maki Kurusu's murder. Okay, I, I would very much like to know what time it is, and, like, what time it was when we first went there. Like, would he have realized that if there was some something going on or like like no probably not it's all a mystery a mystery so i see so that's it so 
From the sofa, I spring to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Do, 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 do. Daru and Mayuri turn and stare. This is all an elaborate cover up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which means our entire government may already be under their control. Oh my god. You know what? That sounds that sounds legit right now, but they underestimated me, for I am not so easily played. One day I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. You will regret your words and deeds. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda, from the fridge. No tip for Dr. P? The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. Ah, uh, elixir intellectuals, a drink fit for a genius. No, not intellectuals, intellectualis? Cola is better. I agree with Ataru. I agree. I agree. Okarin really loves his 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 derpy. <laughs> I pity the man who knows not the greatness of this beverage. <laughs> Step through the curtain dividing its center, and you'll enter the heart of the future gadget laboratory, the development room. Just as the name implies, this is the room where we develop future gadgets. Needless to say, it is strictly off limits to. Our to outsiders. God, I hope we don't have to choose where we move around. Yes, I know this setup is cheap. I would much rather have an airlock than a curtain, but our research budget is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. I poke Daru and bid him follow follow me into the development room. Do, 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 do. All the windows here- oh, that looks pretty good. All the windows here are weather stripped with packing tape, so it's dim and hot, almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're currently accepting donations. Upon entering the development room, I pick up the lab coat that's lazily draped on a chair and put it on. I always wear a lab coat in the development room for practical reasons as well as symbolic ones. Daru, however, refuses to wear his. Putting it on and taking it off is apparently too much trouble for him. He can't be bothered to do anything that doesn't interest him. It's men like him who give our generation a bad name. His lab coat, purchased from my own pocket money, I might add. Pocket money just sits on the, sh on the shelf. It's never been worn and probably never will be. Daru, is the plan progressing smoothly? How many GME stocks do we have now? Buy more. Uh, what plan? Daru gives me a blank look. I sigh and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger than newer home models. A cooking appliance which heats food by bombarding it with microwaves, originally called the radar range was it the microwave was invented uh when a radar technician i know about this actually yeah this is a cool story about how they discovered this radar, radar technician accidentally discovered that electromagnetic waves could warm food afterwards research con continued and the consumer appliance version was launched in america in, in 1947 it's actually a really good ex good example of why like science is never really um you know, clean, you know, like just be like funding science is a really good idea because you, it's like, oh, well, what, what the fuck kind of applications are we going to get out of that? We usually don't know, uh, you know, like there's a lot of like, uh, accidental ones that we stumble upon. It's pretty cool. Uh, it emits electromagnetic waves at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. This is a special frequency known as ISM band, which is also used by wireless LAN devices. Consumer grade output is around 500 or 1000 watts and commercial grade output is around 1500 to 200 or 2000 watts. Uh, why are they saying that? The plan, as in the plan, obviously. I'm talking about perfecting gadget number eight. Oh, that. How was I supposed to know what you meant? We know each other for what, three years now? We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an inseparable bond, like prison cellmates. He's only been a lab member for two months, though. We were in different classes during the year, and actually we didn't talk at all, so two years? Damn, if we hadn't sat next to each other, we would never have been here. Boom. Butterfly effect details. The point is we've known each other for a long time, I expect you to keep up with me here. Nen o p e. Awkward silence. So, is he not even allowed? Does he just live here and he's just like, just putting up with our shit sometimes? Man, all I wanted to do was have one of those cool cryptic conversations where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, but no one knows what it means except us. Shot down again. So, are we any closer to figuring out what's wrong with gadget number eight? The fuck is gadget number eight? Not yet. So far, the future gadget laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. As explained to Alpaca Man. 
<laughs> the last primary goal is to develop weapons for the war against the Dark Dominion led by the organization that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. But along the way, we have managed to create some ingenious future-ish gadgets as a byproduct of our research. It is a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident. In other words, serendip- Fucking hell. The ability to discover something valuable when looking for something else. The microwave oven was born through serendipity. Allow me to introduce our glorious future gadgets. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. Future gadget number one, the very first future gadget, uh, a toy ray gun with a TV remote jammed inside. You can change channels by pointing it at the TV and pulling the trigger. However, the only supported button is channel plus. No other buttons like volume. <laughs> Useful to turn the TV on, you must manually flip the switch on the TV. Its name is a reference to the classic Japanese robot anime, Mobile Jacket uh, Gun Bam. Is there going to be one of these for all of them? Oh my god. Gadget number two, the Bamboo Helicam. A CCD camera mounted on a bamboo toy helicopter. The camera is attached to the helicopter's fulcrum, allowing it to record aerial footage unpowered. However, the image is rotating at high speed, so you might get dizzy if you keep looking at it. The name, name originates from the sci-fi manga 22 Emon. I, d I don't understand these references. Gadget number three. Could this be Aura Aura? A lie detector based on... <laughs> Um, what the fuck respiration though it might be more appropriate to call it a sweat detector you have to admit it's a pretty clever invention its name is a reference to the classic manga juju's bizarre adventure all right gadget number four mode snake an instant super humidifier uses electric heating coils to quickly boil a large volume of water. This generates enough steam to fill a room uh, of 12 square meters, though it can only be operated continuously for a few seconds. It looks like a Claymore landmine, which appeals to military otaku. Its name is, reference, is a reference to the stealth action game Metal Moa Solid Rising. Gadget number five. Once again, I've made a worthless object by go... <laughs> Help, I marry you to flee. Created by combining a dryer and a vacuum. The dryer is operated by using the exhaust of the vacuum. Its third is its name is a reference to the popular anime Lupin's the Third. Alright, that one I don't know. I don't know what that is. The Sialoom Saber. Future gadget number six, a red chemical glow stick with a handle attached, allowing one to grip it like a sword, made possible not just with the future gadget laboratory hardware, but also with chemical knowledge. Uh, inspired by Spark Wars, a series of epic sci-fi movies. I don't know that one either. Uh, Ghost in the Ball, a gadget created by arranging 12 6-inch CRT monitors in a sphere. Small CMOS cameras are installed in the gaps between the monitors, each connected to a, the monitor on the opposite side on the opposite side of the sphere. This attempt at practical optic optical camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest masterpiece among the completed future gadgets, but its sheer size makes it difficult to store. Its name is derived from the sci-fi manga Ghost in the Husk, which has a, an anime ad adaptation. Ghost, ghost in the Shell is all about um, uh, viruses, right? Like a, a virus in your computer is like a ghost in the shell. That, that's what that means, right? Yeah. They all they can all be seen on the website Daru made, so feast your eyes upon the product of a mad scientist's genius. Anyway, our current problem is future gadget number 8, the phone wave, name subject to change. Phone wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the end uh, until we come up with something better. For the record, it was Mayuri's idea, not mine. When a future gadget is completed, the three of us discuss what to name it. I prefer names based on mythology or names with hidden meanings that need extra extra explanation to understand. Dara thinks my naming style thinks my name is too ridiculous he just doesn't have a passion for words like i do mayuri can't be bothered to remember difficult names she says they don't fit in her head and so our opinions on gadget names are always split but i digress the phone wave uh name subject to change is in short a remote controlled microwave okay so is that what we heard when we went to that lobby or is that like something to do with the, the, the weird phone thing that we got did, did we accidentally make a fucking time machine like like what the fuck is this thing that those numbers there kind of kind of the cylinders kind of look like what happened when um when everyone disappeared you put food into the microwave before you leave 
then you, on your way back, call the attached cell phone to start the heating process. Voila, hot food ready for your arrival. So it's basically a piece of junk. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave, named such as the change, has a second unintended capability. It can time travel. Our, bra our brave, or possibly just ditzy, Mayuri had, had made it her daily routine to heat some frozen fried chicken by remote control. Long story short, she was defrosting her beloved juicy chicken number one, as usual, when the unex unexpected happened. If a fucking chicken came out of the microwave, the chicken came out more frozen than when she put it in the microwave refroze the chicken okay yeah congrats you accidentally made a time machine since then dario and i have been searching for the cause all right make make a big one and go in and then make it like a, a slightly smaller one and put that one in it too we tried copying what my my, my she did. okay when did this come out steam's gate 2011 oh this is the anime 2009 and when did uh when did primer come out 2004 yeah okay steens gate i see you i see you bro we tried copying what my my yushi did but we can't can't just reproduce the freezing phenomenon and when we tried to freeze a banana it turned out really weird i just don't get it daru now looking completely fed up with the heat starts fanning himself with his shirt i know what he means by really weird Let's see if we can't make it happen again. Mayuri, Mayuri, bring forth the bananas. Are you going to turn them into gel bananas again? What? That's been bugging me, Mayushi. Can you stop calling them gel bananas? But gel bananas are gel bananas. What the fuck is a gel bananas? I take the bananas from Mayuri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave. Name subject to change. <laughs> Why do you have to use the whole bunch? It's a waste of food. Dude, your stinginess could cost us the battle with the organization. Is that a can of 7-up? on? Oh, it's 9-up. Okay. That's fine with me. Mayushi always buys the bananas, and now Mayushi can't eat a single one. Oh, give her a banana! You don't need to put the whole bunch in. Next time, I'll only do one banana. But I already put the whole bunch in, so I, so I ignore her hungry complaints. The phone wave, name subject to change, is simple to use. It's a microwave with a phone taped on. The number is already in my address book. Address book, I just need to call the phone wave. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. To bring up the phone, click the date at the top of the left corner or press the phone trigger button. To use it to call the phone wave, name subject to change. You can call, check the contents using the help button system all right uh, it was b wasn't it no how the fuck did i call the phone last time when i picked up the controller r1 right trigger oh i accidentally hit the trigger last time then all right right trigger all right so um we can change that set call ringtone Do, 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 do. Gate of Steiner. Yeah, sure. Set male ringtone. All right. I'm connected. Hello, this is Phone Wave. Name subject to change. <laughs> this is the voice of Mayushi Guidance, the system Daru program to operate the Phone Wave. Do you hear Mayushi's voice? Be quiet, I'm trying to listen. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the number button, please enter the heating time in seconds. For example, press, uh, uh, it's pound, isn't it? Pound 60 for one, for one minute? For two minutes, press pound 120. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave. Name subject to change to function like a normal microwave. Instead, we're going to deliberately mess up and enter 120 pound. No, we're not. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. When I answered the command, the phone wave name subject to change starts with, with a low hum. Won't this just warm it normally? Crap, I messed up. 
I immediately shut it off. Let's try again. This time we're going to ignore the guidance and enter 120. Crap, I messed up. Let's start over. Crap, I messed up. Aww. That should do it. This method was originally a simple mistake on my use part, but it somehow starts the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. The turntables begin to turn. Nice turntable, right? It's even spinning backwards. Backwards? I never noticed that. That might be serious. Might have serious implications if we look at quantum critical behavior driven by Hun's rule. The rule. Oh, this is not uh, uh, Chini Bayou. The rule governing the placement of an of an atom's electrons. Orbitals of the same energy are each filled with one electron of the same spin before any are filled with a second. Also known as Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to 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 pretend like I understand uh, like atomic shit like like the, like I understand like like the, th the theory and some of the concepts you know how like they're in orbit and shit but like just no like, no fucking way like no I'm not even gonna pretend to understand that shit um yeah no not Hun's rule no okay the Zerios wait and stare at the spinning bananas. After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Mario takes the bananas out. Gel bananas are ready! The bananas have become not bananas, gelatinous blobs coated with thin membrane. Oh my god, who goes in the machine? Oh no, there was that flash of the green. Oh, or do you just get covered in bananas at one point? Oh no, okay, so these are just becoming like, like unripe. Okay, so, um, that makes sense, but, like, what the fuck? <sighs> After my Yuri discovered that the phone wave, name subject to change, had a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. It just gets more confusing each time. Daru, you wouldn't mind eating one of these, would you? Of course you wouldn't. It's for science. Your sacrifice, uh, will forever be remembered. Okay, at the risk at the risk of saying something stupid, how have they not realized what they have? Like Really? They look really nasty. The taste doesn't matter, what matters is that you eat it. So come on, Daru, no need to be shy, break a leg or a stomach and go for it. No way. Fine, my Yuri, the honor shall be yours. But gel bananas are all goopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Wait, sure you tried one? It had no flavor and wasn't tasty at all. Goopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Dario, what do you think? Soft and squishy bananas, huh? Soft and squishy banana. Mayushi, say your banana is all soft and squishy for me. Nice nose bleed, bro. Darukun, your nose is bleeding. Please just say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Your banana's all soft and... Don't make her say that, you perv. Daru cheats after I hit him with a tissue box. Mayuri looks at us with an innocent smile. She doesn't get it, obviously. I think she does. Anyway. They're gelatinous, a semi-solid state of matter. In other words, there is a possibility that the intermolecular bonds were weakened. What could have partially liquefied the bananas? I've got it. I turn to the whiteboard and write freezing in the middle, then I cross it out and slap the board with my hand. And then Sai slaps the desk. What we, what we thought was a freezing function is actually something else. A bold statement if I do say so myself, so why isn't anyone surprised? Now's the time to shout. What you say? Come on, don't be shy. Ooh, what you say? The reactions are pathetically weak. Mayuri probably does, didn't even understand half of what I said. I think she did. Uh, we already knew that. Oh. The problem is we don't know what it, what it is doing or why it's doing it. Haven't you watched enough anime to just intuitively figure this out? If it's the opposite of freezing, then couldn't it be thawing them? What a silly question, Mayuri. What you're describing is just a normal microwave. Then what is it? We don't know, and that's the problem. He's right, to be honest, I haven't a clue. 
do do. Any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Dario and I to head to Daiburu. Fictional, a skyscraper with offices and a commerce center that opened alongside UPX in 2003, connected to UPX by, by overpass. There's going to be a seminar at ATF and we have to be there. It's part of our studies at, at Tokyo Denki University. Fictional, short for Akihabara Techno Forum, a meeting hall located inside Daiburu. Daibiru? Daibiru? Several universities and research institutions hold special seminars here. You know, I'm really sad about dropping my Upa. It's worse than last year when I missed buying Fatty Guru Froggy. Why are they why are they blue? Reply. I feel your pain. That thing was worth a fortune. Our precious research funds. Ors. You know, I'm really sad. Oh. Let's call the phone wave. No. Who's Luc Lukaku again? Oh, we're two hours. I can pee. All right. Be back in, uh, in five minutes. Enjoy the music.
Is he planning on finishing this game? No, this is not a game. We're gonna read all of it though, it, it looks like, yeah. This is going this is going okay so far. Oh, one second, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thank you to all the gold for the 100 bits. Thank you very much, all the gold. And thank you, Soups. I'm at Soup. Uh, soups with the three month resub. Thank you very much, Soups. Okay, so I'm intrigued so far. Um, I want to know what's going on. I want to know how the satellite uh, was on the roof before, but now it's like crashed into the building and it seems like there was some sort of evacuation. Um, I I'm thought that we like jump forward in time and something happened when we hit our phone but now i'm thinking if it was if it's kind of like there's some sort of like parallel universe or parallel timeline sort of thing um and that we moved over to a different one that instead of it like crashing gently down on the roof it just like slammed into it and there was like an evacuation in in the hour that we spent in the first one or something like that but there's definitely something to do with the phone, that when we use the phone, it triggered something. But I don't know how that works. Like, I, I don't think that we, we texted, we can text the machine, or the machine that we made has that capability, but there's some sort of link with it somewhere. Like, it's gotta be. There's gonna be a seminar at ATF where we have to be there. Uh, can I look at my phone? Yeah, we, who are we sending a text to? Weren't we sending a text to, um to uh Ataro? daru daru we were sending a text to daru weren't we and then as soon as we hit the button like did we hit a wrong button was there something else from from like there was a definitely a, another version of us there talking to mackie so was did they bring something that that caused an interaction with our phone somehow or something to do with with the uh like i want to send another text message it was fine when, when it was with to Mayuri. hmm all right, I'm very interested to see where it goes, but like so far, this is um, uh, I already said the name of the movie. It's 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 very it has some similarities with with the movie Primer, which is um, probably my favorite time travel movie. Uh, my favorite time travel media um, is probably Dark now. I think like I really enjoyed Dark, and I watched that recently. I'd like to watch it again. Dark is not perfect. Dark has some problems, uh, but I really really like Dark. Like it's it's very moody. Um, a uh, lot of lot of style, pretty good. Dark is really great. Also, you have to read it. It's it's it got subtitles, um, so you'll be right at home. There's going to be a seminar at ATF, and we have to be there. It's part of our studies at Tokyo Denki University. Summer credits, basically, we have to attend the seminar and write a report. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about again? I looked it up before the summer holiday began. I should have written it down. Behind me is the large unidentified object that crashed into a building near Akiba Aki, Bar Station. I'm sorry I can't say that very well. I, I don't know why. Sometimes I'm fine, sometimes I'm not. The building is under police barricade. No one is allowed to approach, but from a distance, the object appears to be some kind of satellite. As we cross the overpass that connects UP, UPX and Daiburi, uh, I look down to the... It's Daiburi, not Daiburi. Daiburi. 
I look down to see a huge crowd of people uh, moving through the plaza. Uh, if you are an, a new viewer, by the way, or if you are a newer viewer, if you joined like after uh, like the Persona 4 thing, um, I, I am legitimately um, kind of dyslexic. Just just a little bit when it comes to reading. It might just be that um, when when I get really, really tired, and I'm always tired because I'm because I'm also narcoleptic, um, I have I have trouble keeping um, uh, lines of text uh, on the same kind of plane. Um, often uh, the two lines that are together uh, will smash together with me, and I'll read something like, "As we cross the overpass that through the UPX Plaza," like like that that sort of thing happens to me a lot. Um, so uh, if I do stumble, and you might think to yourself, "Was Joe like dyslexic or something?" Like like I kind of am. Um, so yeah, that's something I learned somewhat recently actually. So just bear with that. If, if I make a mistake, I usually catch it. There are even some garishly dressed young men and women, the sort of sort you don't see, don't usually see around Akiba. Everyone is walking towards the main street, which is still cordoned off. Daru, aren't you going to check out Radikan? No point, can't get close. I've been following the news online though. There's already a hundred threads about it on Reddit. It's huge, man. Oh, so that's why he was staring at his phone earlier. We enter Daiburu and take the elevator to the fifth floor ATF assembly hall. Man, feel that AC. I'm alive. Unlike the lab, Daiburu has air conditioning, yet another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. About the phone wave, name subject to change. I might have found our answer. You know that name subject to change thing is really annoying. I think it's endearing and funny. Sorry, uh, reading a lot makes me thirsty. Uh, I won't give in that easily. <clears throat> it's vodka, by the way. Even if no other lab members, it's water, use a name subject to change, I will carry on until the day we decide its true name. Now is not the time. So what's your latest ridiculous theory? What do you mean ridiculous? My genius brain considers every possibility, even those a lesser mind would say break the laws of nature. Don't you dare call that ridiculous. I think we should go get Maki and stuff her into the fucking microwave. So basically you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. You can't call that science. Daru, I have a hunch that the phone wave name such to change may be the key to opening Steen's gate. How's that? Steen's what? You lost me back at ridiculous, man. Where was the semicolon? A, an a, a chime signals our arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator doors open slowly as we step out of the elevator. Yeah. Ah, it's Mackie. She's back. I bump into someone. I quickly grab the person's shoulder, shoulder to keep them from falling. Sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> what? It's a girl. And I recognize her. You. You. Impossible. Chills ran down my spine. I stared at her face in disbelief. I saw this girl just three hours ago. Deed. Yeah, purple blood for sure. Maki Kurisu, you're the reason I went and played a Pokemon. Is there something wrong? Kurisu frowns and tries to back away, but I don't let go of her shoulder. My grip tightens. Ow. You. You should be dead. Why are you here? And you're even... There isn't a single blood stain on her clothes, and they're the, the same one she was wearing when I found her. What if she dies again now? Only a serious wound could have produced that much blood. Yet as far as I can tell, she's completely uninjured. Not a scratch. Hey, that hurts. Let me go. Kurusu pushes me away. Then she shoots me a wary glare. A glary. I realize that I'm gaping in disbelief. What's wrong with you? You're okay, but that's impossible. Someone stabbed you. I saw you lying in a pool of blood. That's impossible. That again? Daru interrupts. Wait, there's something strange about what he just said. What do you mean, again? I mean, you sent me that email like a week ago, right? I sent you an email? Don't be ridiculous. I saw her dead just three hours ago. Hey, could you not talk about me like that? I'm perfectly- What do you mean a week ago? Oh. <sighs> did... Did the... Did the... F 
the machine send it back a week so he got it a week before we even went there or it has a week passed and he doesn't realize it hey could you not talk to me like that i'm perfectly fine you know that message was kind of weird it was dated a week after i got it which means it came from the future oh what the f how the fuck does that work it came from the future that sounds like something you'd read on the internet, Dario. It's rare for you to talk about ridiculous theories. Yeah, and for some reason it was super weird. I, I never brought it up to you. No, the date was definitely a week later. It came from uh, the 28th. Wait, that's today. Dario pulls out his phone and shows it to me. He's right, the email was sent from my phone. You received it on July 21st at 12.56, but it was sent on July... 8 28th at 12 54 it was split into three emails sorry three mails it took two minutes someone stab but <laughs> maki your suit don't why did i send such a short message in three parts and it looks like the third email got cut off i do recognize the content though that's weird this is the email i sent you three hours ago but i sent one mail not three and there should be more text did Dara really get this a week ago? Interesting. Suddenly, Caruso was standing next to me, peering intently at the screen on Dara's phone. Shouldn't we have a record of that? No, we don't. Huh. Like, shouldn't we be able to show him the one that we sent? Like... Hmm. All right, the email's not important. Well, maybe it is, but not right now. The real question is, why is she still alive? Is she an illusion? No, an evil spirit? Am I haunted? God, I hope so. I don't believe in such unsci unscientific drivel. I am a mad scientist. I timidly reach out to Karusu's face. My fingertips stroke her hair. I feel silky. Quite the cuticles. Excuse me? Substance. She has substance. Of course she's not a ghost. How silly me. You literally grabbed her shoulder, dude. Yeah. You just an excuse to touch your hair. What is with the circles? Okarin, I don't think that's a good idea. I poke Karusu's cheeks with my fingers. Such softness. Dead bodies don't feel like this. Not that I've ever touched one. Hey. Oi. Wait a minute. We already touched one. I bumped into her coming out of the elevator. I even grabbed her shoulders before I before being pushed away. Shoulder, and I'm still and I still doubt that she had substance. That's just proof of how confused I am. Mm -hmm. If she's alive. Then what did I see back at Radicon? What was that scream I heard? Were they hallucinations, just like the mass disappearance? That's right, she was stabbed. Maybe she's just hiding her wounds. This requires further investigation. Strip for me! I grabbed the hem of her blouse and slowly... What?! Are you trying to get yourself arrested? I just want to know the truth. This is classic Ch Ch Chibi Bayou right now. I stare straight back at Kurusu as she trembles with anger and, and lift her blouse a little higher. Oh. Why? Oh, she said anime. Why? Why? Why are you letting us? What? Tr you, what? What truth, you perv? You stupid. Want to die? She pushes my hand away. Louise Chan's famous line for the win. Fictional. The main heroine of the anime, the familiar of ten, a Sundere. Uh, her voice actress is the queen of Sundere. Sugimiyori, nickname Sugiyu. Sugiyu? Daru shouts something silly, but I ignore him and press Kurusu. I know what I saw. No way. Did you see my under. Fucking love anime. Kurusu's face turns bright red. She firmly pulls her blouse down. You couldn't have seen my underwear. I'm not wearing any. No, you fool. Not that. Earlier this afternoon, after Dr. Naki Bachi's... <laughs> that was not even close. Naki Bachi's presentation. Someone killed Maki and left her in a pool of blood. I carefully explain everything that I saw. <laughs> Wait, Dr. Nakabachi? 
What are you talking about, Okarin? Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was cancelled. Cancelled? Yeah, because of the satellite crash. Something's wrong. Our stories aren't matching. It's the same thing that happened right after I saw the mass disappearance. Mayuri's, Mayuri, Mayuri's story didn't match mine. Oh, okay. So that, that wasn't the Mayuri that we were with before then. All right. I need to know. Am I caught in some sinister plot? Is this another organization conspiracy? Excuse me. Um, my name is Honin Kiyoma. Really, man? You're hopeless. Okay, Hoenn-san, I'd like to hear your story in more detail. <sighs> Japanese and places this is a name suffix that define the speaker's relationship to the addressee. The common honorifics are as follows. Son, the most common honorific used with strangers, people of equal status, and in general, whenever one needs to be polite when used after the given name, Kayoma-san, it indicates a closer relationship. Uh, Kan, an informal name suffix generally used for male friends or, or male subordinates, also used by males towards female subordinates in professional environments. Chan, a diminutive... Uh, suffix that indicates a high affection, usually used for small children, young girls, or in between close female friends. Tan, an even more diminutive version of the Chan suffix, most often used for fictional characters, especially anthro... I can never say this word. Anthropomorphizations for added cuteness. She, a liter literary honorific generally used by formal publications such as newspapers. Some otaku, such as Daru, use she regularly. Looks like she finally understands I'm not lying, but I still don't understand why my memories don't match everyone else's. I doubt that I can give her a good explanation. Just then, an older man steps out of the assembly hall. Makase-san. It's almost time. Huh? All oh, right. Thank you. Kurusu glances at me one more time, then sighs and heads toward the small conference room. Is, like, she giving the talk? Or is she helping? We should go to... Go where? To hear the lecture, da? Ah, that. Daru follows after Kurusu. Did she come to attend the lecture, too? Strange. Why would the girl genius, Makizi Kurusu, need to attend a lecture like this? Well, is she a girl genius here? Or, like, or, or is that the... Was there, like, a split when that happened? Or is this, like, completely different? Or, like, what the fuck? Okay, my guess was a bit off. The girl genius didn't come to attend the lecture. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to hear me speak today. Okay, she's a guest speaker then, okay. She's the one giving the lecture. Japan's famous girl genius, Mikizi Kurusu, who had her thesis published at the tender age of 17, spent wasted her time before her fucking lecture talking to me. According to Daru, she turned 18 a few days ago. I first heard about her when Daru pointed her out in a Gossip Magazine article. Yeah, he would know that. That's when he told me she was going to be a guest at ATF. I'd forgotten all about it. It's my first time giving a lecture like this, so please forgive me, I'm a little nervous. The audience is pretty mixed. It's mostly students like us, but there's also a couple of professors. And Kurusu just gave me a sharp look. What did I do? When I return her stare, she quickly averts her eyes. Hmm. I don't care if she's a genius or whatever, I still don't like her. She may have these people fooled with her timid girl act, but it, the, the applause is just keep going. But I learned that Raddy Chan, Raddy Can, how cunning and aggressive she really is. She was fine, even if her murder was some kind of hallucination. My judgment of her character is still correct. For today's lecture, I've been asked to speak on the subject of time travel, of course, but it's it's not really my area of expertise, but I'll try my best. Time travel? Oh ho. Let me start by saying that time travel is an absurd concept. Objection! Hua? Every member of the audience, not just Kurusu, Ki Kirusi, Kurusu, is startled by my interruption. Perhaps I'm being slightly rude here, but I'm not one to just sit and listen to some genius girl's drivel. It's presumptuous for you to claim that time travel is absurd. Okrin, you magnificent fool. Sitting at my side, Daru throws me a small salute. ATF staff are approaching, probably to kick me out. Perhaps I got too carried away. Um, okay, it's fine, I guess. It'll be easier to talk in a discussion format. Thanks to your proposal, the event staff refrained from escorting me out. She sounds a little pissed, but let's not mind that. But before that, please listen to my thoughts on the subject. It's dumb. Drop the mic. Scientists have proposed many theoretical models of time travel, but there are 11 in particular that bear mentioning. Oh boy, are they all going to have their own fucking dictionary entry? Hmm, what are the major theories of time travel? I heard about the cosmic string theory at least. The 11 theories. 
Neutron star theory, black hole theory, light speed theory. Neutron star theory, black hole theory, light speed theory. Tachyon theory, wormhole theory, exotic matter theory. Cosmic string theory, quantum gravity theory, cesium laser theory, elementary particle ring and laser theory, uh, Dirac antiparticle theory. What about a high amount of copium? All right, when are we going to have the 12th theory? Watch out for it. <laughs> There's room. The 12th theory hiding somewhere in the academy. Watch out for it. My god, the 12th theory. It's true. Holy shit, 12th theory. Fucking microwave. <laughs> hmm, not bad. Perhaps Maki Kurusu is a worthy rival after all. However, all of these models are purely theoretical. Some of them even contradict each other. Well, what if someone comes up with a 12th model? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, damn. Back on our bullshit. Hmm, ah, uh, right. Well, it could be contradicted by the 13th model now, couldn't it? Oh, we're up to 13. Oh, man, 13 Sentinels. All right, where's the 14th one? Damn, she twisted my question and used it against me. Touche, genius girl. Suddenly, I feel eyes on me. Some puffed up professors would give me hard looks from across the room. Maybe I got too carried away. I don't want to risk losing my credits. I should back off for now. By the way, time travel to the future is available to us right now, according to... Oh! oh okay. So it's not, it's not Steen's Gate for no reason. It's named after Albert Einstein. Okay. So it's, it's Einstein's Gate. All right, special theory of relativity. First, both Einstein's special theory of relativity published in 1905 and his general theory of relativity. Do you know how long I've been waiting for his name to show up so I can drop the mispronunciation? I thought it was gonna happen much sooner. <sighs> God damn it, his general theory of relativity published in 1916 represented by the famous equation E equals MC squared. Uh, the special theory of relativity is defined by the following axioms. Objects cannot travel faster than the speed of light. At, I like the word axiom. As velocity approaches the speed of light, the passage of time approaches zero. As velocity approaches the speed of light, length approaches zero. As velocity approaches the speed of light, mass approach, approaches infinity. The general theory of relativity adds the following axioms. In the presence of large gravitational fields, the passage of time slows down. In the presence of large gravitational fields, space curves. In the presence of large gravitational fields, mass increases. For example, let's say someone were to go to Haneda Airport and board a plane headed to Okinawa. Upon arrival, that person would, would be about 100 millionth of a second farther into the future than I am. What does that mean? Nothing. According to the special theory of relativity, time moves slower for objects as they approach the speed of light. For example, if you could run at near the speed of light, you could reach a point where time only moves half as fast for you. If you were to keep running at that speed for 24 hours, 48 hours would elapse in the rest of the world, meaning you would jump one day into the future. Understand, Hoenn Kiyoma? Why are you singling me out? I'm doing my best to hold back, but it looks like Maki Kurusu wants to pick a fight. Is that are those times right? I thought it was. Um, I thought it was even more than that. I didn't. I didn't think if you if you could somehow move at the speed of light. I thought it would be a lot slower than that. Is it really like like one to two or? Hmm. I wish she had. Or was that just an example that she, that she was going going with? Uh, I wish she hadn't said that name in front of so many people. It's too great a risk to let others know my true name. But it's not really, really time travel, is it? No, Professor calmly makes an objection. True, Maki Kurusu's example isn't strictly time travel per se, but I never expected an older man, a professor, that to refute an 18 year old girl. Maybe he's just testing the genius girl's resilience. Yes, you're right. The genius girl readily concedes the point. If she were a normal 18 year old, it would be impossible for her to be this calm in front of all these people. A normal 18 year old would panic when refuted by such a distinguished looking professor. And yet, Mackie give it, Mackie's giving off an aura of gutsiness that says, I can take this guy on. Then what about going to the past? Gonna take you back to the past. I mean, it's functionally time travel. Going to the past is possible right now. Take a look at the, night, the sky at night. You can see light from tens of thousands of years ago, can't you? That's not time travel either. Yeah, that's true. 
It's really cool, but that's not true. This time, it's a nearby student who objects. Well, I was just getting started. Go f go far enough away and have like and have like a, a telescope strong enough, like like supernaturally strong enough that you could look back and see the dinosaurs. Kind of fucked up. Was it just me, or did Kirisu look a little nervous just now? Let's just let's say we wanted to make a machine that could physically transport people through time. What would we need? Unobtaining. The best candidates for this are cosmic strings and wormholes. A cosmic string is a string-shaped crevice with extreme mass. A string-shaped crevice. That must be how they enter our universe. <laughs> Do two cosmic strings really exist? <laughs> the crevice is about as wide as an elementary particle and at least as long as the diameter of a galaxy. It has immense mass, so it distorts space-time. If you were to travel through that distortion, you can make a full circle around the string in less than 360 degrees. In short, you can do something resembling a warp. This is called a space-time angular deficit. Is it, though? When you pass through an area of angular, of angular deficit, transit time becomes zero. Now we apply this to, co to a cosmic string moving at near light speed. According to the special theory of relativity, time will flow slower for the cosmic string in relation to its surroundings. Therefore, passing through the area of angular deficit would cause the transit time to become negative instead of zero. Sure. In other words, you will arrive in the past after transit. Wouldn't you just blow up? If you use two cosmic strings, you can do a space deficit jump. If you loop back to your original location, you can return to the same time you started revolving and kill yourself. And that, roughly speaking, is time travel by means of cosmic strings. In physics, the, th the theory that all matter in the universe is composed of strings, the vibrations of which manifest as elementary particles. This theory, which posits 11 dimensions, is currently is cur oh damn is currently impossible to prove experimentally. However, it is said that if this theory is proven, it will explain all phenomena from the birth and scope of the universe on the macro level to elementary particles like quarks on the micro level. I think I think I read recently that like Einstein, uh, um, everything that Einstein is known for, uh, he discovered quite early in his life compared to like the image that a lot of people have of Einstein and then he spent the rest of his life uh, pursuing something that would um, you know explain everything more uniformly and he just never quite got there um, uh, some some people uh, even propose that he he wasted the rest of his life I don't think that's true I think the book that I read about that actually refuted that and said no not really but um, it's it's some people do argue that you know he, he never um, never reached that level of achievement again and uh he was just kind of on like a fool's errand after that for the rest of the rest of his life cosmic strings are not the same as super strings now then you need three things in order to travel to the to the past with cosmic strings First, the cosmic strings themselves, two strings to be exact, by the way, by the way, they are hypothesized to exist only where the universe was first formed, so they might be a little hard to find. Second, you would need the energy required to make them make them move at near light speed. How much energy do you think you'd need to accelerate something as long as the Milky Way to near the speed of light? I'm pretty sure it's a little more than 1.21 gigawatts it originates from the 1980s trilogy of hollywood movies about time machines and time paradoxes in the first movie the inventor of the time machine said that it needed 1.21 gigaw gigawatts of power to travel through time in reality the unit gigawatt does not exist the scriptwriter made a spelling mistake the correct unit is uh gigawatt oh man damn no one's gonna laugh at this joke this turns a few drop from the audience. Nerds! Third, you need a spaceship capable of reaching these cosmic strings and returning, with the time traveler alive, of course. And then he busts in the room. Already done! What do you think, Hoenn san? Care to take on the challenge of cosmic string time travel? Like, that's even possible. And why the hell is she addressing me? I wasn't even the one who jeered this time. Hmm. Looks like Hoenn san doesn't want to take the challenge. 
In that case, let's consider wormholes. They may be a little more realistic than cosmic strings. Well, there's no way that fucking rinky-dink satellite made a trip like that. Like, there's no fucking way. By the way, Hoenn-san, do you know what wormholes are? Yeah, they're like when you dig in the garden. No, don't ask me. I'm trying to hold back here. Since I've been challenged, though, I can't leave the question unanswered. It's like a shortcut through space, right? Yes, that's correct. Phew, I got it right. Knowledge up! I sigh inwardly in relief. There are two wormholes joined by a tunnel. No matter how far away the wormholes are, transit time through the tunnel is zero. The wormhole collapses on itself due to its own immense gravity. But oh no, there's a problem. The meteorites, the wormhole tunnel, suffers from super gravity and collapses as soon as it opens. So we need to do. So we need something to negate the effect of gravity. Anti-gravity, so-called exotic matter, a substance with negative mass which repulses other matter. Inject exotic matter to repel the surrounding force. The wormhole no longer collapses. Negative mass, huh? Is this something that floats if you leave it on the ground? Maybe not. I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like. A modded microwave. Kurusi raises her right fist. Say that the wormhole tunnel is being squished by an invisible fist. In order to pass through, you need something that could oppose my fist's grasping force so I, so that I can't squish anymore. Squish, squish. Kurusu opens her fist. If you stabilize the tunnel with exotic matter injection, instantaneous travel between wormholes becomes possible. To travel through time, however, it takes a little more effort. For example, let's say there's a wormhole entrance here in Akihabara, and the exit is in Los Angeles. First, we send the wormhole in LA all the way to the end of the universe and near, like, near the speed of light, and once it's there, we yank it back to LA. How can you send the wormhole? Uh, how? Yeah. According to the special theory of relativity, time slows down for objects moving at the speed of light, meaning the hole that returned to LA would be further in the past than the Akihabara hole. So now, like, is is the wormhole on a plate or something? Like, how are you moving the wormhole? So now, if Hoenn-san jumped into the wormhole, he'd arrive in LA several years before he left. Nice. However, this still can't be called true time travel. It only seems that way. This is called the Yurashima effect. In special th relativity, a phenomenon originating from the, the fact that time slows down as an object approaches the speed of light. For example, imagine that an astronaut travels to a nearby star and back, it, and back it close to the speed of light. This trip might take a few years from the astronaut's perspective, but he would return to Earth to find that thousands of years have passed in his absence. RIP. Pretty scary. The important part is to return to Akihabara from LA through the wormhole once more, since the transit time is zero. Hoenn-san will return to Akihabara several years in the past, time travel complete. The prerequisites for wormhole travel are simpler than, than the ones for cosmic string travel. First, the wormhole itself, they may exist somewhere in the universe, but nobody has ever seen one. Yeah, so like in, in this, the, you can only go back in time as, as, as far as when the wormhole is first created under this, right? So um, in order to, to be able to go any further back than, than the creation of it, you would have to find one that naturally occurred. I think there was like a there was like a web comic that did something like that that I read. Second, the energy required to move a wormhole to the end of the universe and back at near light speed. Third, exotic matter, which by the way has not been confirmed to exist. So implementation of either one would require a ridiculous amount of effort. Now, do you see what I meant when I said that time travel is an absurd concept? I mean, it's just a matter of time, if you ask me. Time travel theories are just, are all just thought experiments. Not one of them can create a viable time machine. That is my answer. Drop the mic. Is there anything simpler, like something you can pull out of a drawer and just use or something? That's like kind of shaped like a microwave? I'm afraid not. Firm declaration. This is the limit of modern physics. I can't say how it might change in 10 years, though. I mean, it's been longer than that. Besides, even if someone did overcome the logistical requirements, there may be other factors that prevent time travel from working. Actually, didn't they recently find out what what uh, what dark matter is? I remember watching a video on that, too. They, j they just figured out what, what most of that is? Like, they, they've accounted for that now or something? Or... No, I'm pretty sure I watched a video that explained that. 
that they said that, that they've they figured that out or they have like a pretty good theory of it like it's all theoretical but like it's like science theory instead of uh so that, like a ver veracity in videos i think that that's the one and he spoke about something like that that maybe it wasn't dark matter maybe it was something else it was some pretty big discovery though on that level Maybe it was dark energy or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Do do do, and that's just that's because fundamental problems concerning the principle of ca causality have not yet been solved. A scientific and philosophical principle that states that everything. Sorry, you can hear the baby. One second. Lily's on it, but the um, Kate's still a little bit upset. Sorry if you can still hear. Uh, did we read this? A scientific and philosophical principle that states that every event has a cause, and it is by that cause that an effect is produced. The theory of relativity is founded upon that, this principle. However, quantum physicists have observed microscale phenomena that do not appear to obey the principle of causality. Have they? And it's because fundamental problems concerning the pr principle of causality have not yet been solved. There's no free will. You mean time paradoxes and conservation of mass? The mass of the entire universe is constant. If a time machine traveled from the future to the past, there would suddenly be the extra mass of the time machine and its pilot in the past. I remember reading in a book, not a terribly reputable book, but still, that such a violation of mass conservation would put the universe in danger. It didn't say what kind of danger, though. If you think that conservation of mass applies to macrosystems like the universe or microsystems like atoms or elementary particles, you're mistaken. What? Is that true? Heh. <laughs> ah, she's laughing at my reaction. That little... God, how mortifying. Conservation of mass only applies to chemical reactions. It doesn't hold in modern physics at all. Something can come from nothing. What? Well, that's pretty amazing. Then what is the problem? The time paradox of time paradoxes. In other words, the grandfather paradox. Oh, that thing where you kill your own ancestors before you were born. As long as this paradox goes unsolved, time travel can never be realized. Never. What if you just don't kill them? Lol, forehead. <laughs> you can't think of like a sci-fi movie. It's not just about your family tree. There are far greater dangers than that. If you go back in time, you have to... Excuse me, you have to kill your, your, your grandfather. <laughs> Choked a little bit there. You have to, you're forced. An entity appears and puts the gun in your hand and says, you have to do it. We have to get past that paradox. Really, it doesn't seem that dangerous. <sighs> oh, that hurt a little bit. Any paradox, no matter how small, would cause the total collapse of causality, relativity, and every other physical law in existence. Paradoxes are nothing more than thought experiments that cannot occur in reality, and they should not. Nothing that has even a 0.000001% chance of causing paradox can happen. The universe won't allow it. When you say this is a logical, this is a logical conclusion. There may be loopholes like parallel worlds or the self-consistency principle, but those seem too much like fantasy for me to accept. I grind my teeth. When I see Maki looking at me with her composed expression, I avert my eyes. Looks like I have no choice but to concede. Maki truly is a genius. Eh, she's alright. I end up listening to all of uh, Karusu's lecture at ATF. 
After the two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was an impressive lecture, so impressive that you wouldn't think it was an 18-year-old's first time. She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? Leaving that aside, I saw Mackie dead, and yet she is alive. My memories don't mesh with reality, and not just about Kurusu, my conversations with Daru and Mayuri don't, didn't make sense either. Everything would be solved if I had just told myself that what I saw was a dream, an illusion, it never happened, but never say never. This leaves me with no choice. Time to see the fox. After parting ways with oh, there's a fight. After parting ways with Daru at ATF, I head to Yana Bayashi Shrine. I need to get exercised. I seriously doubt that the Mac that the Maki at ATF was a ghost. Regardless, it's a natural. It's natural to seek an exorcism after such an experience. I'm Japanese. It's in our blood. Yana Bashi. Uh, sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Shrine is located at the other side of Kanda River. To find it, enter the first side road after crossing. Manchi Bashi Bridge. It's a very small shrine that doesn't fit with the surrounding multi tenant buildings. Kanda Myojin is the more famous shrine in Akiba, but I deliberately chose this one. The shrine is so small you could easily miss it if you weren't looking. Regardless, I can hear the chirping of. Uh, I can't. I don't know how to say this word. I can't remember. I know what they are, but I don't think I've had to say it out loud before. I've heard it said though, and I can't remember. Uh, Sick it does? Cicadas? 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 Or cicadas? Cicadas? Cicadas from the few trees growing here. How the fuck are you here? It's ochre and da -da -da. There are two girls standing in front of the main building. One of them is my Yuri. The other is a docile looking beauty in traditional Miko attire. Shrine maidens, priestesses in the Shinto religion. Miko typically dress in a white kimono with a red haka hakama or skirt. Their role is to assist priests with performing rituals and events. Urushibaru Luka, a stunning example of feminine charm and grace. Lips delicate like cherry blossoms in bloom. The essence of Japanese beauty. The chief priest's son. That's right, son. Lovely in every way, but he's a guy. Good afternoon, Okabe-san. I, I am sure this is going to be handled with all of the, 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 the maturity and grace that it deserves. <sighs> Let's hope it is, actually. He bows his head. The voice of a girl, the mannerisms of a girl. More feminine than any girl I know. But he's a guy. Taller than Mayuri, yet oh so slender. But he's a guy. Looking stunning in Miko robes. But he's a guy. Holding a bamboo broom, apparently in the middle of cleaning. Please don't say it again. But, but he's a guy. But he's a guy! It's almost evening, yet still hot as hell outside. But he's a guy! Damn sicka does won't shut up. But he's a guy! Cause it's a game! Lukako, that blade I gave you, what happened to it? He's a friend of mine, I call him Lukako. We met when I rescued him from some aggressive photographs in Akiba's pedestrian heaven. Some neighborhoods of Tokyo, such as Akihabara, close major, close major streets on busy shopping days. This effectively turns the street into one big sidewalk, facilitating pedestrian access. Alright, so he's he's a Genshin Impact character, okay. It also happens that Lukako and Mayuri are classmates. I learned that fact after I had gotten to know him. They they kinda look similar to me. Are they are they siblings or or just classmates? Lukako is taken aback by my sharp question. He starts fidgeting with a flushed face and tears in his eyes. Um, you mean Demon Sword Samadari? Correct, I bought it for you so you could learn to control your power. What's happening? Oh yeah, you bought it at Blade Works, right? I think you said it cost 980. Fictional, one of the several stores in Akihabara that sell replica weapons, items include Japanese Sengoku period swords, European Middle Age swords, and knight armor. 
Don't say another word anymore and they will come to silence you. They're gonna silence me? Thanks for worrying about me, Okarin, but who are they? I ignore my, my Yuri's question. So, Lukako, are you making sure to bring the practice with Samadari like I told you? Okay, are you like indoctrinated into our bullshit or are you just like, you know, as when I if I go along with it for long enough, uh Rintaro goes away. Like like <laughs> what's going As long as you carry it and master the Sinshi Shisen Zanma school of swordsmanship, you can prevent the dark flame inside of you from consuming your soul. Demon sword Samadari may be an imitation sword, but that is only the form it takes to hide from the world. When one worthy to wield it appears, it unleashes its true power, and it was on sale for only 900 yen, tax included. Name pending. Thank you, Okabe-san. It is a wonderful present. My name is an Okabe. This isn't my sword. It's Okarin. I'm sorry, Keoma-san. As long as you understand, now speak the words. Uh, um, El Sai Conga Con Congaloo. No, not Congaloo. Kongru. Yes. El Sai Kongru. No, she's fine. Did did I get it right? Lukaku smiles happily as I nod. Thank you, Arigato. Such a lovely smile. But he's a good yep. Such a beautiful master disciple relationship. Mayushi's not not a Fujoshi, but she's getting a little excited. A term for female otaku with a particular interest in yaoi or works of fiction that depict homosexual relationships between men does not apply to female otaku in general. Oh, oh yeah, so she she knows exactly what's going on and uh, yeah, okay. Eh, Mario Chan, please don't imagine such things. Jeez.